Well, hello everyone. Um, welcome back. I want to discuss something. This is one of those things that we get a lot of questions about at times. And so I just want to explain for people who may not be familiar with how some of the things are done from the historic churches. I know personally, coming from a very strong Protestant background, as I moved into the historic churches, uh, some of the terminology, some of the words were a little bit different. And I found out that a lot of times it's just a, really a lack of communication, a lack of understanding. And so I, I want to address one issue specifically that comes up frequently, and that's the issue of the priesthood. And what does it mean to be a priest? So I'm Father Rick, I'm a pre uh, ordained as a priest, and people, a lot of people who are from a Protestant background are like, wait a minute, but didn't the priesthood end in the Old Testament? Why is there a priest in the New Testament? Is that biblical? Where did that come from? Um, what's going on? I mean, there's a lot of those kind of questions. So I want to explain, because this is a situation where it really is a matter of a word being translated in a funny way. And if you know what that is, it answers all the questions right up front. So I, I want to address that. First, before getting into what it means for me personally to be ordained as a priest, I want to address a little bit bigger picture, a little bit bigger thing. In the Bible, we see in where 1 Peter 2.9, where Peter is writing to the church, he's talking about for all Christians, okay, all Christians. And this is the um, King James version I'm going to use. I, sometimes I use multiple versions. This happens to be King James. Um, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So speaking to all Christians, it says you are all part of the priesthood. Yes, 100%. Now, but if all Christians are part of the priesthood, why are some people priests and some people not? Huh? Let me explain. See, there's two different words that we use in English as priest. And these are very different words with very different meanings. And I'll explain this. Now, this first word here in 1 Peter 2, 9, the word is, um, my, my, okay, I, sometimes I pronounce my Greek poorly. It's spelled like hieros, but it's arios, arios, okay? It's the same word it's, it talks about when we have Jesus as, as the high priest. We now have a high priest, and that one says Archerios, a high priest. See, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, people could not go to God for themselves. Only a priest, only a special person could go. And they would go and they would make sacrifices, and they would do all these things depending on whatever the sin was. That was the whole system. In the New Testament, that same system is what Peter is referring to here in 1 Peter 2. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Every person who is a believer, every person can go before God for themselves as an irios, as a priest. You don't need someone else to go on your behalf to God. You can go. You can go and pray to God directly. You can seek God directly. You can know and experience the presence of Christ for yourself without anyone else in the way. And I think everyone from a Protestant background would say, yes, yes, we believe that, we agree with that. But then how are you a priest? What's different? Good question, glad you asked. See, here's what happened is in Timothy, and it talks about positions of leadership in the church. And we see them talk about deacons, diaconos, presbyters, 
elders, I should say, pres which are presbyters of presbyteros, and bishops, episcop episcopos, or episcopacy. Here's where the confusion or the lack of communication, the, the, the funny translations took place. The word in Timothy for people who are in a position of leadership in the church, the elders of the church, presbyteros in Greek. A transliteration, if you go straight from Greek to transliterate. Now notice I'm not saying translate, I'm saying transliterate. Let me explain, if, you, if you're not used to going between different languages, the difference between translation and transliteration. Transliteration is when you try to keep the word the same, but the letters and the sounds don't match up, so you just try to bring it over. A good example is this. When I was in Korea, and you used your cell phone, okay? The Korean word for a cell phone is handapon. What does it sound like? Hand phone. They did not translate cell phone. They said it's a hand phone. But because the sounds in the Korean language are different, it was transliterated handapon. See how it's almost the same but a little bit mixed up? Okay, that's what's happened. Now remember, 2,000 years of this happening. So the word presbyteros, if you go directly into English, presbyter. Oh, it's where we get Presbyterian, the Presbyterian churches. It's uh, the word presbyter. Okay, no problem. People understand that word. But when you go from Greek to transliterate into Latin, to transliterate into, and you go through two or three steps along the way, over time, it kind of got slurred and slanged and mixed up together to become from presbyteros to priest. So when you see the historic churches, the Catholic, the Orthodox, the Episcopal Anglican, the Old Catholic, um, all of these churches, the, either the Lutheran churches, and they talk about someone being a priest, ordained as a priest, they're not talking about the, the, the heroes. They're not talking about the priesthood of old believers, where we can all come to Christ for ourselves. They're really saying, you're ordained as a presbyter. You're ordained as an elder. Make sense? Now, we know from Scripture, there are many, many different types of spiritual gifts. Charisms. Gifts of healings, gifts of miracles, tongues and interpretation. I mean, these are dramatic things. Other things not quite so dramatic, gifts of mercy, gifts of charity, gifts of giving, gifts of service, of hospitality. We know that there are some that are called as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for ministers. We see those who are called in positions of leadership as bishops, as elders, as deacons within the church. And these are different people who are called to different positions and different charisms, different spiritual gifts that were not higher than another, not better than one another, but complementary so that the whole body of Christ, every part, can work together and fit together so that everything together, everything just fit to get the job done. And that's where we find that, is in that for those who are called to certain positions of ministry, as an elder, a presbyter, presbyteros, as a priest. And that's where that word comes from. And that word is, again, like I said, different from the fact that we are all priests. So I'm a priest who's a priest, meaning I'm part of the priesthood of all believers who happens to be a presbyter or an elder. Got it? So, wanted to explain that because I know sometimes for some people that's a little bit confusing. I hope I didn't confuse you even more. Um, but if you have any questions, like I said, please feel free to leave a comment, send a message. I'm happy to explain even more if it's useful. And I'll see you guys next time. Hope you guys have a very wonderful day, very blessed day, and we'll see you. Goodbye. God bless.